in this video, we're going to discuss the idea of continuous compounding. And so before we actually talk about continuous compounding, we want to kind of motivate it a little bit. And so to do that, I'm going to start with a balance in my account, let's say $10,000 to match my problem that I'm gonna do for continuous compounding. And let's also fix the interest rate at 10%, again, a match my problem. And I'm gonna start with compounding once per year. And then I want to find out in my problem how much I'm gonna have in 20 years. So I'm gonna use that as my years. And then I'm gonna calculate the future value just using the future value formulas that are built into Excel. So if I go to my future value function, my rate, remember, recall for the future value function is the rate per period. The n per is the total number of periods. So it's the number of times I'm compounding times the number of years. I have no payments in this case. I'm just setting money aside. And so my present value is my principal. And then uh, this is going to give me a negative value. And I don't want that. So I take my negative and I stick it there so that I get a nice positive answer. Now, this would be the future value of my account if I wasn't compounding at all, if I was only compounding basically once per year. Now, when I do compounding more often, I get interest on the interest more frequently. And so what I want to illustrate is I want to see how this value changes. I want... Excel is trying to be helpful here and it's not actually doing what I want it to do. Let's try this. Um, I wanna see how the amount of interest that I'm earning changes as I increase the number of times I'm compounding. So typically the next more frequent from yearly is quarterly. And see, I earned like an extra $5,000. That's like a big deal, but then um, the next frequent, next level of frequency is typically monthly. And see, I earned a little bit more. What about um, weekly? 52 weeks per year. It didn't go up quite as much. What about daily? See, I only earned another extra like a hundred bucks. What about hourly, or what about every minute? Wait, 24 times 60. It helps if I do my math correctly. Hourly every minute, every second. Let's see how big a number is this? This is 31 million times a year. A year. What about um, 10 to the eighth? Or 10 to the ninth times per year? or 10 to the 10th times per year, or 10 to the 11th times per year. As you can see, what ends up happening is the amount in the, the balance essentially stops increasing. Um, it actually gets to a point where, um, in fact, compounding it 10 times more frequently does basically nothing. Hmm. Weird. Um, there's an overflow error or something. Uh, but basically it does nothing. This was 10 to the ninth, 10 to the 10 to the 8th, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 10th, they're all exactly the same amount. 
So that suggests that there's essentially an upper limit to how much additional compounding is gonna get you as you increase the number of times that you do the compounding. So what is that upper limit? Well, essentially that upper limit is defined by this continuous compounding formula. And so there are certain things out in the world that act like they're continuously compounding, even if technically they aren't. Uh, but they're con compounding so frequently, they've essentially reached that upper limit. Um, and so the stock market over time, not in any short period of time, but like over years of time, tends to behave as though it's continuously compounding. Uh, inflation tends to behave similarly. Um, this is essentially an exponential growth formula. And it's beyond the scope of, of this course. We, we need calculus to talk about exactly how we derive this formula. But essentially, as you increase the number of, of times you compound, you get to an upper limit. And we can use this formula, this continuous compounding formula to obtain that upper limit at, and calculate this value. And so that's what I'm gonna do. This particular problem, I'm investing my $10,000 in the stock market. It behaves like continuous compounding at approximately 10% per year. How much can I expect to be in the account after 20 years? Well, my table seems to suggest $73,890.57. And let's just verify that this uh, formula is actually gonna get me the same amount. A is our future value. So my principal is 10,000. The rate is again, 10%. I'm compounding for 20 years. And if I use this formula, it's the principal times, we use EXP for the E, function, it's 2.71828, blah, blah, blah. It's a transcendental number similar to pi, um, but it's about 2.7, but it, it goes on without repeating any decimals. And we use EXP for that number. And then the exponent uh, is inside the parentheses. And that is the rate times the time. And indeed, if I convert this to dollar values, um, I do in fact, now these, these uh, rounding uh, issues here with like being one cent off, uh, I think that's more of a Excel computer type issue uh, and not a, um, not a legitimate penny. Uh, we saw what happened when I put in 10 to the 11th um, suddenly things got even weirder and this is not actually supposed to happen. So uh, this is an Excel, this is a, cal a calculation error and not a, um, not a legitimate thing. But you can see that this does in fact match the value that we got uh, when we calculated every second of compounding. And then beyond that, what we actually just see is um, computer rounding errors. Uh, when when you essentially divide by such a large number, uh, the computer has issues with the rounding, and that's why we get this slight difference. But this is the value that we would expect from continuously compounding, and it avoids this issue that we run into with these very small numbers of computer rounding errors that have to do with the representing dust-based 10 numbers as binary and things like that.